Okay, so it's really hard with the camera on. No, just pretend. Okay, you didn't I need to look. I think I need to just look at you and pretend yeah. it's not there. Okay, wait. Start again. Take. Take two. Take two. Yeah. So, B, how you end up in Jam Journey House in Udon Thani, Thailand? <laughs> well, um, I was on the train. Oh, no, let's start. I was at the train station in Bangkok. Um, I had stayed there for one night and I saw this lady with her GoPro at the train station. I was quite jealous that she was getting a really good shot of the train, like slow-mo, the best positioning you could be in. And I was like, I wish that was me. And then I get on the train and I look up and it's, you're sitting next to me. And I was nervous probably for the first half an hour. I didn't really talk to you. Yeah. And then after I wanted to know why you were filming. So I asked and you said, we have a channel called Jam Journey. Yeah. And now I'm here. <laughs> a week later, I came, I went to Nong Kai and then came back. Yeah. Uh, we met on the train, you know, from Don Mueang. Bangkok Don Mueang uh, to Udon Thani, but B, she straight to Nong Kai, but I just get off at Udon Thani. And after she finished Nong Kai trip, she texts me because we exchange information and say, hey, do you know any good hotel in Udon Thani? I say, I'm not familiar with Udon Thani because even I'm born in Udon Thani, but I'm not living in Udon Thani. I say, how about, if you don't mind, you come to live with us, <laughs> But our house is about 30 minutes from Udon Thani. She said, oh, it's cool. And now she's here. Yeah, and what? that was like the best thing. I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned with traveling is like being open to opportunity because sometimes you can get stuck in your comfort zone. And I think if I wasn't open to that or I, you know, if I had a closed mind, I wouldn't be here right now and I wouldn't have done all the things that we've done in the last week. So it's kind of, you have to take the scary steps and the opportunities and meet people on the train yes. and stay with them for That's a week it. and then you're pretty much part of the family. You've been travel a lot of country in Asia and in some place in the US and in Asia which where where you've been in Asia what country? Um, I think I started with Vietnam um, I think I was nine, 18 or 19 when I first went to Vietnam um, I went with an ex-partner of mine for a few weeks and I just stayed in Ho Chi Minh City. I did like it, but um, if I was to go again, I would have, would see more places. Thailand I've been, I think, three times now, three or four times. Um, obviously Malaysia because it's a stopover, Singapore, I think. That's it. I've been to the Cook Islands. My dad's side of the family um, is from the Cook Islands, which is Polynesia. Um, it's actually directly below Hawaii. I've been to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, I actually lived there for two months last year. My partner lives in Hawaii, um, and I love it there. But I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Obviously, New Zealand and Australia. You went to the Philippines. Oh, the Philippines. Yeah, I always mm -hmm. I forget that one. That was actually one of the most recent ones. Mm -hmm. Um, in October last year, I went to the to Manila. Manila. I always struggle to say it, mm -hmm. but um, in the Philippines, and that was really cool. I just went for six days, okay. but I, I might go back to the Philippines. Who knows? Okay. What What is in Thailand is attract you so much? You come back so many times. I think for me, Thailand, it is the people. Like everyone says, the people were just like so accepting. Um, and one thing that I do love is every single day people call you beautiful. <laughs> so you just being a Farang in Thailand, people, especially in a small community like this, mm -hmm. people kind of, you know, they're not used to seeing people like me. So every single day people call me beautiful and it just really makes me happy. Yes. <laughs> but also that's, yeah, so many other things. Mm -hmm. Like it's very, very cheap to live here. It's very reasonable. I kind of honestly just like how everything works here. It's easy to understand, even things, yeah, I don't know. You would think being in another country that you can't speak the language. We don't think too much. Yeah, 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 everyone's very chill. Mm -hmm. No one overreacts. Like if you, you know, even if you say do something offensive or 
you're not wearing enough clothing, that's probably the one that I get stuck in the most because I don't like wearing. I tend to whole tell much. you yeah, yeah. <laughs> I luckily have a friend who tells me when I'm not wearing enough clothes, but before that, I really. <laughs> I'm not, you know, the greatest, but no one is mean to you. Like I am very sensitive too, and I think if someone was mean to me, mm -hmm. I would be scared and probably not go back. Whereas here, everyone's just like, oh, like just a suggestion or like a friendly, yeah, advice kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. You told me that you start with two luggage when you came Thailand. It's the month ago. Yeah, yeah, a month ago. How you went up with two luggage? Now you got two backpacks. Okay, so when I first started, things definitely went a bit different this time traveling. Um, and my plans change as they do with travel, but I had a carry-on suitcase and a large suitcase and kind of a lot of it was just out of comfort, like things that I wanted from home to make my trip more comfortable. But as my trip went on, I realized that I could be more minimal and kind of each day I just needed less and less and I think that's the beautiful thing of traveling is it kind of teaches you that you don't need all these materialistic things that we have in everyday life you can live with a backpack and one little bag and it's been over a month and I'm fine and I do you could carry more stuff and do laundry less but you don't wear half the stuff you carry anyways that's true being realistic yeah. so you can kind of cut it down to a few things and I did watch a lot of YouTube leading up to my trip on like people what they pack in their bag and mm -hmm. things like that and there is things that I packed that I don't necessarily use too so some of them just go but I donate everything I don't throw things out so I always try to donate to someone or yeah whatever. for a good cost too. yeah <laughs> bike <laughs> so, exactly. that's the reality of it I can guess in t from her accent she must from Australia or New Zealand what what country you born and where you were okay so i'm actually born in new zealand um i lived in new zealand all my life until i was about 19 i think i left um everyone always gets this wrong and especially people from america always think i'm from australia or they kind of think that they're not the same but kind of like mm -hmm. people do get really confused because mm -hmm. new zealand is such a small country mm -hmm. But I've lived in Australia for the last four years um, and now I actually don't have a home <laughs> so when I packed up to leave um, on the 21st of December I left Australia and I sold my car I so I got rid of everything and I just have my backpack my bag and that's all I don't have yeah I'm technically homeless <laughs> but in the best way possible yes yes and um how you can be able to travel how you're budgeting yourself okay. being homeless <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does sound weird. not really homeless not really homeless i've got a great host here yes um so i've always been really good well not always but pretty good with money um and saving like i've started working at a very very young age i had multiple jobs i've always been a very hard worker um so I just feel like I live, I'm very good at living a very cheap lifestyle. So when I'm in Australia or when I was in Australia, I would work, just constantly work, work, work. I'm not much of a party animal. And when I have a goal in mind, like traveling, I can put everything into that one goal and just not kind of things that people would spend money on, like clothes and alcohol and stuff. I just go without that because this is so much more work than in you know? So yeah, just working and my job in my job in Australia is I'm a disability support worker. Um, so I have my own business and I have for about three, three to four years. Um, I work mainly, well, yeah, my specialty is kind of working with autistic people and people with ADHD. Um, and yeah, I've done that for about the last three or four years. And that's kind of how I just save up to do this yeah she were she told me she worked like a full month and take off and travel yeah yeah yes. so I pretty much my, my lifestyle kind of a lot of people you know they work and then have like two weeks of holiday a year but for me that's just not living so for me I go to work and I work extra extra hard for a few months really hard and then save my money go travel for a few and then obviously start making income again yes and how you went up to be support um, 
worker in the with the artistic person? Um, it actually really it started quite organically. So I before it was disability support work. Um, it was kind of the whole Marie Kondo situation. I did home organization, people's pantries and mm -hmm. wardrobes and that kind of thing, the labels and the special folding and all of that. Um, and doing that, I actually met some of my clients, my previous clients who um, yeah, were families with autism and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we just, I just really knew how to care for them. Mm -hmm. um, so it, yeah, it came really naturally. Hi, Jim. <laughs> hey, guys. We're doing an interview. I'm doing laundry. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's got to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it really, I just fell into the role. Um, and then from there, people, like I've never paid for advertising with my business. It's just word of mouth. Like if you are a, a genuine person, you care about people. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that need support out there. And mm -hmm. It's a really rewarding mm -hmm. job being able to support people with disabilities. Okay, be a backpacker and travel. What do you want to show people in like, your situation that they can do it? Yeah, so pretty much the reason, like I want to start, I kind of have been filming videos for probably about a year, um, even through the time that I work, every now and then I'll grab the camera and I'll explain a little <laughs> bit about what I do or just things about mental health and I'm really passionate about psychology so I actually am autistic myself um, and ADHD and I forgot the question which is all part of it. it's okay it's <laughs> mean what you want to show oh, the world okay. that you can that was a really good example. Yeah, the autistic person can do yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, so I, I pretty much just want to show, because like I obviously work with people who struggle with these things, and I've seen that travel can sometimes be so out of reach, or at least autistic people think it is. And even one of my favorite creators um, reached out to me recently, and he said like if I could show people that you can be autistic, ADHD, and still travel, or how to do it, or things... How it's achievable that it could be like a big game changer for mm -hmm. autistic people because he said that's everyone's dream because especially if you're ADHD which is ADHD as well you kind of have that mix of really adventurous like yourself um, very spontaneous but then the other side with autism is like quite strict and needing routine so it can be yeah a really hard thing to work out but it can also be amazing because you go on fun adventures and like this like mm -hmm. I didn't think about it you just invited me kind of thing and I was like of course like that would be amazing because it's yeah all about the opportunities but there is definitely things I do to help like this is probably my biggest thing I'm gonna have a grab a while here yeah these are noise cancelling headphones I wear I use them all the time um they kind sunglasses. of sunglasses yeah. yeah as you can see I wear my sunglasses I don't like eye contact or I kind of have like a a quota of amount of eye contact I have each day and I've been going well over that so yeah I just wear these. She, she did very very well you know with Jim and I and our family and yeah. also the whole village here <laughs> the whole village literally <laughs> we we had a funeral um, earlier in the week and yeah I, I met a lot of people but it was everyone was so welcoming and that's what I mean about Thailand mm -hmm. is like especially your family like everyone mm -hmm. just was so so welcoming and the first night I was here, I had this in front of me, just this table of food, and every two seconds there would be another family member trying to feed me, and it was just like the nicest thing, especially being tra traveling for a month and not having any family or any comfort, you know, and then just coming to somewhere with so much family and comfort mm -hmm. and animals. There's also dogs and yeah, everything. being in travel in the from the western, and also when you come to Thailand. We eat a lot of spicy food. How, yes. how how you get away with it? How how you work on your food? Uh, food, you know. Yeah. Well, food can be a really big thing. Is is for me for a lot of people coming here, but especially being autistic, like textures and stuff sometimes throw me off. Heat, like spicy. I don't necessarily hate spicy food, but I can't really eat much. Um, like extra extra spicy so sometimes I'll just get like if it has a chili on the side if I can see a dish and it has like chili not all through it it just has like the green chilies on the side or something I'll kind of put how many I want in 
or like the other night, your family made me um, papaya salad. Papaya salad, and with they, one chili. <laughs> they asked how many chilies I wanted, and I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so you suggested one, and mm -hmm. for me, it was still spicy. Yeah, it's it was still really spicy. spicy. <laughs> but it's something. Yeah, I, I think I stick to kind of the typical from dishes, mm -hmm. head Thai, chicken fried rice, but also um, I spent a month in Krabi before this. And there, like, I would kind of live, again, really cheaply, but just local food places on the side of the road, you can just ask them. People are so friendly, so, I, like, I just say, like, what's spicy, what's not spicy, and they'll mm -hmm. kind of give me a bit of an idea. And I found some things I really like, a lot of chicken and rice, that's, chicken yeah. and rice is the answer to everything. But also 7-Eleven, like, if you're having a really bad day and... 7-Eleven! You don't want things, <laughs> go to 7-Eleven, because, uh, yeah, in the morning, a lot of the time I just have a protein shake or something, but... I really recommend trying, getting out of your comfort zone and trying the food too because the other night even like I tried so many things that I hadn't had because in Isan, Thailand it's very different to where I was in the south mm -hmm. so yeah like the sticky rice mainly right is mm -hmm. like very cultural to just this yes. part. Mm -hmm. Isan area. Yeah. yeah so I tried a lot of things that were kind of more specific to here and I really liked them and I think um, Mao's family also kind of made special things for me that weren't spicy or they just gave me all the food that wasn't spicy so just get really good friends and then they'll feed you <laughs> not spicy food okay been in three days in the village of Isan you know what do you think about Isan Thailand <laughs> okay well I really I love it like I've never felt so welcome and I've never learned so much and I remember the first the end of the first day here I was like my brain is thriving but it's also exploding with so much information um, but I love it like one of my favorite things is sleeping people in Thailand sleep on the floor a lot yeah. or the ground and I love that I love being close to the ground people um, a lot of autistic people call it floor time it's kind of like babies when they need floor time autistic people love floor time and it's essential to balance your like sensory things um, yeah, so the first night here we had a bit of a family sleep yeah over my mom lounge. my sister <laughs> and baby they all sleep on the floor <laughs> because we had a there was a family funeral so yes. we all kind of just camped out here but it was it was great like mm -hmm. I could definitely get used to the fan like the Isan family kind of village way of living yeah um yeah and I also love she fit in very very well <laughs> for, for, <us. laughs> for us. most of people just think she's my daughter because she said is, is that your little farang is that your little farang and say no just the girl that I met on the train <laughs> I can't believe how many people think that you're my mom. Like, yes. Every single day, multiple mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. just ask. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't think we look like at all, but... <laughs> I should dye my hair pink, then should I? <laughs> yeah, well, we asked Jim, but he didn't seem too keen on the idea. <laughs> no. He didn't really pass the test on that one. Okay, that's not subject for a backpack uh, girl, backpacking, you know, travel. Uh, they have a lot of questions about budgeting. How, yeah. how you as the... Pack, backpacker traveler how are you budgeting you just your situation yeah and yourself okay so I pretty much before I came I spent a lot of time on YouTube looking at things mm -hmm. I don't know if I said that before but I watch a lot of um, videos on on all topics traveling but mainly budgeting um, how much is realistic to spend each day mm -hmm. that kind of thing what you can get for your money so also go into it with a bit of knowledge so you don't come and get ripped off because you're in a foreign country where you can't speak the language, you're going to be paying tourist prices anyways. Yes. So just learn a little bit about it so you don't get completely ripped mm -hmm. off. Because it's really easy and it happens every single day. Mm -hmm. um, but personally for me, yeah, I just watched a lot of videos. I spend, I think, 20 US dollars a day roughly. Um, and that's food, accommodation, mm -hmm. everything. I personally don't drink that much mm -hmm. or party much. So I do live like a... I would consider it a pretty cheap lifestyle. Mm -hmm. People probably think for a long-term traveler it is mm -hmm. maybe more on the expensive side, but if you were drinking and partying, you would be spending double probably what I'm spending. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you're comfortable with your budget? Yeah, I'm really comfortable with it yes. because for me, certain things, that's one of the things with um, being autistic and traveling is comfort is 
the main priority. Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel safe or also just being female, sometimes mm -hmm. it can be, you just want to, don't put yourself in tricky situations. Mm -hmm. Like your comfort is everything. Mm -hmm. You're worth more than $20 a day, you know? So if you need to spend a little bit more to be comfortable, have a bit of sleep one night or to get a ride home or something, mm -hmm. just do it. Okay. Um, so, you've been travel in Thailand over a month now and you still continue to travel in Thailand. Yeah. Where do you go from now? From tomorrow you're leaving to Chiang Mai. Do yeah. you have any where else in Mai that you want to go? Um, yeah, so I'm not really much of a planner when it comes to travel. Um, I kind of like to just go with the flow as much as possible. But I did have Chiang Mai booked before I even actually came here. Yes. I, that's kind of the reason because I just booked a flight from Udon Thani Airport and I kind of thought that this is the perfect opportunity. So I booked the flight a few extra days so I could come here and spend some time and mm -hmm. see the village and everything. Um, and after Chiang Mai, I, I'm kind of just going off people's recommendations. A lot of my friends have said I'd like Pai and Chiang Rai. You, you and Jim have kind of yes, recommended yes. and some of your friends and stuff. So I just go off people's recommendations. Mm -hmm. And then after that, my visa here runs up on kind of near the end of February. But I'm, I kind of want to go back down south. I definitely have, I really do like beach yeah, yeah i love beaches like i grew up in new zealand so i yeah. love the beach um love being near the ocean i think mm -hmm. that's a big thing for me so after i go up north i'll probably maybe stop in bangkok for a little bit mm -hmm. again um and then go back down south and then yeah I, I honestly don't know i just take it each day as it comes i've only booked one night um an accommodation for tomorrow and then yeah. We'll might. go from there yeah just know. go from there yeah swing it this day do you just want to show the world be uh, special and uh, like you yeah. can travel. Yeah. yeah what, like do, what do you want? What do you want to get? Okay. Talking about what you gonna want to show the world how how the autistic people can travel. Yeah. Tell a little bit. Yeah. So I just I really I just want to show people that no matter what goes on for you um, with your mental health or other things it is still achievable and you mm -hmm. can still do things that seem extremely scary and it might terrify you, you might get stressed mm -hmm. but with enough kind of it's not planning but the, I research a lot like I don't just go into things I know a lot of people think I just jump into things mm -hmm. But I research for months before. I spend hours watching YouTube videos mm -hmm. from people like you and Jim. <laughs> just people who give travel tips and stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just really want to show other people, mm -hmm. and even people like my clients, like, mm -hmm. you can travel. Um, and one day, m my big, big goal, at, I really do want to share and create, you know, a community for autistic people so I can give advice and mm -hmm. we can all share each other, our stories and stuff. Yeah. But my biggest goal is one day to be able to do group trips with people like myself mm -hmm. who sometimes we, like, I, some days I don't even want to talk and mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. So I want to create a community that, yeah, one day my biggest dream, we can, like, I'll kind of maybe hire out a place, probably in Thailand, I yeah. would say and have people from all around the world, just a small group because yeah. autistic people travel, yeah. Yeah, don't really like that many mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. um, and we all come together and there would be goodie bags, of course, with fidgets because we need these. Yeah, um, I would, yeah I've, I've kind of thought it all out. Mm -hmm. I would love to do like lots of different goodie bags of things for sensory, like mm -hmm. maybe you know headphones and things like that. Yeah. And then there's optional activities, so you're not Sometimes I don't like to make plans or I don't feel like doing something if my mood's off mm -hmm. I just want to show people how to accommodate for themselves. Mm -hmm. So if I could one day You know plan a trip and take the stress off other people Autistic people having to know you know all the things and I could just say I've been doing this for years these are kind of My tips and how mm -hmm. I do it like you're welcome to join if you want to if you feel you know Yeah, so that's my big big thing Yes, um, we're very happy to have be with us for three days. You know, um, it's accidentally met at the train, but you know, from what I believe is, if we never um, been sister or brother sister for the 
past life. You know, we never meet again. And now we probably was brother, sister in the past life. You know, yeah. now we met again. Yeah, <laughs> that was like one of the cool things that, that you taught me and I really yeah. liked it. Like, that's just one of the, the ways of thinking yes. that I really, really like. And the main thing that have an open mind and be kind to each other. Yeah, and thank you, you and Jim, for having me. It's been really nice. I've been very, very spoiled. So if anyone else wants to come stay, <laughs> Jam them, Journey. Let Jam Journey know they're great hosts. <laughs> they will take you to all the good places. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Let's -bye. Bye. hit it. Let's turn this off. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. I have to read what it means. Put these on. Yeah, put this on. Can you see the stuff? Does it look bad? No. No, it's, it's part of the scene. Oh. Yeah, it's too far. It's closer. I don't like sitting too close to people. <laughs> it's another one of those weird things. I feel like that's good. Let's look. What do you think? Hmm. Yeah, that's good because it's cutting off a good mm -hmm. amount. This needs to come out. Yeah. I don't really like this. Yeah. That's perfect. Okay. Mm, I could probably even go this way a bit. Yeah, but yeah. <sighs> I feel like we need to do those like, oh, it's probably a really young movie, but you know, <laughs> a high school musical. <laughs> and it's like, mm, mm, yeah. And they're like practicing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's practice. <laughs> hey, B, <laughs> how you end up in Jam Journey House in Udantani? <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm really nervous.